Most people don't know it, but there it is. I said, but secondly, and here's the profound thing, Pastor Jim. Folks, hear me. At the end of the garden fall, God calls them all together. You remember this? And he says, all right, now it's judgment day for y'all. And he tells Adam what he's going to do to him. You know, you'll toil by the sweat of your brow. He tells Eve, you'll give birth in pain, you'll give childbirth, etc. But then he looks, and the Bible calls it the serpent, because the metaphor is still going. He says, and you'll crawl on your belly and you'll eat dust. Well, that is a reference to him being thrown to the ground. Revelation 12 says that. And then he's down and he's, he's mad because he knows his time is short. But watch, this is what's important. Then he says to Satan, folks, I can't wait to share this. This is so powerful. <laughs> he says to Satan, and I'm paraphrasing, but this is what it says. And now, Satan, serpent, I'm going to tell you something. There is a woman that's going to produce a seed. The seed's going to come from her womb, and you will bruise his heel but he will crush your head. Now, we understand that to be, and the vast majority of scholars understand that to be, the first prophecy ever uttered in the Scriptures out of the mouth of God himself to Satan, your day is coming. And it's going to come through the seed of a woman. Now, I want to get back to that. But to prove that that's what that is, we go all the way to Galatians 3, verse 19, and it speaks of the seed, the promised seed, capital S, who came, that is Jesus, through the line of Abraham, which would be the birth of the Hebrew people, the nation of Israel, through which the whole world would be blessed. But it said the seed, the promised seed, capital S, came and delivered us. Most commentators believe that that goes all the way back to the garden. All right, now watch. So if it's a talking snake, then you have just said that God did not deliver a prophecy. Because how could he be speaking to a single snake about somebody going to, he's going to bruise his heel, but your head's going to be crushed if it was a snake? No, no, this is Satan. And he's uttering a prophecy. But listen to this prophecy. He tells Satan how this is going to happen to him. And he tells him why it's going to happen to him. But watch, you know what he doesn't tell Satan? When it's going to happen to him. <laughs> and he doesn't tell Satan who the seed is. Mm. Which is why all through the scriptures you see Satan, once he figures out that Abraham has promised the seed will come from him, then he focuses in on Israel. Because he knows, okay, the seed's coming. Okay, there's the seed that's going to crush me. It's going to come through the line of Abraham. So what does he do to Israel? Puts them in captivity in Egypt, tries to destroy them, tries to destroy the children through the Pharaohs, you remember? Trying to kill the seed. That doesn't work. That's all thwarted. You come all the way through and all those kinds of attacks happen. I'm trying to hurry up for time here. You, no. come, into, you come into the New Testament. The child is born. But the, the wise men come to Herod. Satan and his demonic are listening. They're watching. They're trying to figure out. And so they, they, they're there, you know, when it's discussed. Well, he was born in Bethlehem. So Satan puts it into Herod, kill all the children in Bethlehem. He doesn't know which one. But now he's narrowing it down. Satan thinks he's got it made. He thinks he's smart. He's narrowing it down. Kill all the children in Bethlehem, two and under. I'm going to kill that seed because that seed is my destroyer. So if I can kill the seed. But then later on, 30 years later, comes one from the shores of Galilee <laughs> who's opening the eyes of the blind. Come on. Who's, who's, who's speaking to the lame and they're walking. Who's opening the ears of the deaf. Who's speaking of the kingdom of God and tens of thousands are coming around. He's watching all of this. But prior to that, here comes this one. Watch, folks. He goes into the desert wilderness to prepare for his ministry. And Satan comes to him and says, Well, I know you're the Son of God, so this is... That's not what he says. Mm -hmm. If you are the Son of God, pick up these stones and turn them into bread. Show me a magic trick. I want to know who you are. 
If you are the Son of God, then cast yourself down, and, and God will deliver you. If you are the Son of God. And Jesus kept throwing Scripture at him, throwing Scripture at him. And he never did say to him, yes, I'm the Son of God. See, see way back in the garden, God told Satan, mm. the seed's coming from the woman, and that's going to be your destroyer. But he didn't tell him who, and he didn't tell him when. And Satan's watching down through the millennium. He's watching it unfold. He's watching it unfold. He's watching it unfold. You know what Ephesians chapter 3? In Ephesians chapter 3, Paul says that what God is doing in these last days in the church, he's expressing his manifold wisdom to the rulers and the authorities in the heavenly realms. He's making a spectacle of Satan through the church. <laughs> Through you and me, professing Jesus, coming under the blood, being born again, coming to the kingdom of God just because we want to. We're not robots with puppets and puppet strings and buttons on our backs. We're coming into the kingdom of God. He's making a spectacle. Ephesians chapter 3 says, of the powers and the authorities. But watch this. Go back to 2 Corinthians chapter 2, and you know what it says? It says, and in our present age, that was the age when Jesus came, he said, in our present age, if the rulers and the authorities of this age had known who Jesus was, they would not have crucified the Son of glory. And he put him on the cross, and now the Word of God and the church and the gospel mocks Satan, saying, you idiot, you played right into the hand of God. Woo. And watch, watch. The Satanists wanted to install their own tribute, a pagan idol, on the Capitol grounds right next to the Ten Commandments. Billions around the planet are witnessing a world in the grasp of sadistic spiritual darkness. This unholy alliance has infected our governments, our religious institutions, and our societies. The world appears to be unraveling. But can the evil behind these dark supernatural forces be defeated? Is everything playing out just as the Bible predicted it will in the final days? At last, you can know the answers to mankind's most urgent questions and learn your destiny among today's events in the new, unprecedented work taking the prophecy world by storm. Gods and Thrones, Nakash, Forgotten Prophecy and the Return of the Elohim by best-selling author, former decorated law enforcement officer and senior pastor Carl Gallops. This changes everything. Available now wherever fine books are sold.